The prices of used exotic cars right now are insane. And like, I'm after an Alfa Romeo 4C, right? And I cannot afford to get into one right now because they're almost hitting 50,000 pounds, maybe a 30K just a couple of years ago. With that in mind, I recently did a video on cheap exotic cars that you can buy for under 30,000 pounds. And today I'm doing the same video again, under 20,000 pounds because you guys asked for this video. How's it going, people? I'm gonna give you 10 different cars that are all pretty exotic in different ways. Maybe not as exotic as some cars, but they are exotic for the money. Uh, for under £20,000, so let's get straight into it. Don't forget, I'm in the UK, so prices in other countries may differ, and whether you buy any second hand car, maintenance repairs, insurance, road tax, all that good stuff is important to remember, especially when you're buying something as ridiculous as an exotic for under 20k. If you like this video and want to see me challenge myself and do it under £10,000 instead, which I think is gonna be very difficult, hit the like button, a thousand likes, I'll make that video. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already, but without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Let's get it started with the Pininfarina designed Alfa Romeo GTV Cup, a car built specifically for a race series and remodeled for the road, with its iconic 3 to V6 Busso engine that produces not only an amazing sound, but 218 brake horsepower and a 0 to 60 time of 6.6 .6 seconds. In 1999, Alfa felt the brand wasn't being recognized for its sportiness, so made the GTV Cup race series with 16 race cars raced by 160 customers over 10 races, then created this road going version to commemorate, celebrate and capitalise on that series. They made just 155 right hand drive examples, each with a numbered plaque to tell you which of the 155 you own, to make it that little bit more exotic. They're not that different otherwise to their standard car except for the Brembo brakes and obviously more aggressive body kit. These are very hard to come by as I mentioned, so when you do find them, expect them to sit in the 12 to 20k region. Here's one for £17,000 with 30,000 miles on the clock. Seals can be rusty, head gasket failure is known and wear and tear is also common given the age, but they're not horrendous and there are owners forums that run through exactly how you should maintain them to keep them running well. Next up we have a car that I would never have called an exotic in the past, but it certainly is becoming a future classic in an exotic kind of way with time, and prices have been skyrocketing. The Mark II Focus RS is now available starting at around £18,000, with 20k still only getting you a 2010 example with around 100k on the clock. It comes with a lovely 2.5 litre turbocharged inline 5 that produces 300 brake horsepower which will get it from 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds. It was built to celebrate Ford's WRC car at the time which has always made me wonder why they didn't go for an all-wheel drive layout but I suppose it wasn't a homologation special so it is effectively just a win on Sunday sell on Monday car for Ford. But don't let that detract from how cool this thing is and as a fast forward it's already garnering classic status becoming less common out on the roads plus the angry looking aero features aren't just for show the wing and split is produced downforce and ground effect. Early Early examples did have some pretty major problems, but in general these are pretty reliable, though you should be aware of potential wheel arch rust. Next up we have the Jaguar XK8, but specifically the XKRS spec, meaning it gets a 4.2 litre supercharged V8 that produces 400 brake horsepower, which gets from 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds. Despite the fact that this car is so much more expensive than the XK8, and the XKR for that matter too, there isn't a huge difference between them, it's mostly visual, with both the interior and exterior getting an update, plus the nice alloys and that sweet front grille. That extra expense may also be in part due to the fact that only 200 of these were made, making them relatively rare. It is a little bit more performant too with the stiffer and lower suspension setup and to be honest I think the car is aging really well. You wouldn't look out of place cruising the south of France in one. £18,000 is the minimum you'll find them listed for and for 20 grand you'll get a 2005 example with around 70,000 miles on it. Look for one with good service issue that's clearly been maintained in line with Jag's suggestions as the engine can be reliable but it has to be looked after to keep it that way otherwise you'll be spending a fortune to keep it going. The older BMW M3s are some of my favourites and if you've watched my previous video you'll know I'm pretty smitten with the E90 series in particular, but for this video I thought I'd talk about the E46 as it has major future classic potential and prices are well on their way up, starting now at around £11,000 with 20 grand grabbing your 2004 model in pretty nice condition. BMW are renowned for their inline 6 engine which is exactly what this has, a 3.2 litre inline 6 that produces 338 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 5 seconds. It's a special car even though it isn't rare at all, which is what has 
has helped it to become the cheap M3, with the E36 ramping up massively in value. CSLs and CSs have gone clear in price, so the M3 is the next best thing, and it's probably best to get into one before it goes out of reach. The one thing I do wish about this car is that the Touring actually made it to production, as a prototype was built but never actually made it. At least the new gen will get one. There are many known issues like the head gasket and Vanos problems in particular, plus the SMG auto box suffering, and some water damage to the electricals, not to mention a cracking rear subframe. Next up is a car I have personally been considering for some time, the Porsche 911 996 Carrera 4S, which is a 3.6 litre flat 6 engine that makes 320 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.9 seconds. Now a lot of Porsche purists will tell you that 911s need to be rear wheel drive, but having recently driven a 992 Turbo S, I can promise you that's not the case. What's especially cool about the C4S is the wider track and therefore wheel arches to fit the all wheel drive drivetrain in there, and I love the styling overall. A little weird near the skirts, but the long light bar at the back and the iconic 911 shape easily makes up for it in my books. Of course, it was controversial in that it scrapped being air cooled for water cooled, but that was always inevitable. And the fried egg headlights were also disliked by many, although I would say they're a defining feature of the 996 today, and I genuinely would consider having one of these for the right price. This beaut starts at around £18,000 and 20 grand to get a 2003 example with 100k on it. IMS and RMS bearings are what you need to look for on these, but many are available now already strengthened. So I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, make sure you hit the like button. As I said, a thousand likes do the same video again at under £10,000 instead. And do let me know in the comments down below, you've got £20,000, what exotic car are you going to buy? Owning an Aston Martin, even if it's effectively a Jaguar and a Ford, is always going to be an exotic experience. And the DB7 offers you exactly that, with its 5.9 litre V12 engine that makes 420 brake horsepower and does 0-60 to in 4.9 seconds. When Ford took control of the Jaguar brand, they took an abandoned project and repurposed it for the Aston Martin, which is why even non-car people can probably see similarities between this and the Jag we looked into earlier this video. Don't discredit the car though as it's still pretty good looking on the exterior, plus it literally comes with a Mark 1 Mazda MX-5 internal door handle, so my bias tells you that you have to like it. My personal favourite thing about this car is its interior though, as it came in some unreal spec for the time, with very cool colourways depending on how aggressive the original owner of the car was. It's the most expensive car on the list, mostly because of its badge, and starts at around £19,000 with 20k getting your 2001 example with 80,000 miles on the clock. The V12 is the most reliable block of the bunch in the DB7, but do watch out for the common aircon failure that does cost a fortune to fix. The Maserati 4200 or Coupe is a majorly cool car for the money and is surely not far from classic status at this point, with its Ferrari 4.2 litre V8 engine that produces 390 brake horsepower, taking it to 60 in 4.8 seconds. I do love to mention that the engine comes from Ferrari, but outside of the Quattro Porte, I really don't think you can find a Ferrari engine for any less money, and if that doesn't make it exotic, I don't know what does. It was designed by Ital Design, and more specifically the same man that has designed seemingly 50% of all classic cars out there in the world. So many, in fact, he even designed his own special edition Ferrari concept car, the GG50. If I was to buy one today, I would want to treat it a bit like a classic already, as maintenance is known to be expensive and build quality isn't the best, according to owners on forums. It does remain a lovely Grand Tourer though, and for the right enthusiast, enthusiast would be a cool car to enjoy a long road trip in. £12,000 around the minimum you'll find these listed for and 20k will get you a 2003 model with around 30,000 miles on it. I would argue that the Bentley Continental GT is probably the most exotic car on this list by whatever the definition of an exotic car is, which is a pretty loose definition in my head at least anyway. It has a ridiculous 6 litre twin turbocharged W12 engine that produces 552 brake horsepower more than any other car on the list, taking it to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Not bad for a car of its size and weight. This came out parading as the more affordable Bentley and was actually originally theorised by Rolls-Royce when they owned the brand back in 1994, when they designed the Java concept. Even though it's the cheap Bentley, they didn't skimp out on features and you go for some incredible specs from a factory, particularly on the interior. You could even upgrade to the Mulliner package to get an extra level of luxury and all in the car was £112,000 when new, which would be 160 k after inflation. Can you name a car that's depreciated 
appreciated more than this? Let me know in the comments down below. These have been cheap forever at this point and £14,000 is the minimum that you'll find them listed for with 20k being enough for a 2004 model with 60k on the clock. Repairs can destroy your bank account but people are much harsher on the reliability than they really need to be as many have been maintained well given the types of owners of this car. I absolutely love the Audi RS6 as the gold standard of how a fast exotic estate should be and though fast estates are sleepers to some degree the RS6 is a special car particularly the first gen with its 4.2 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine that makes 443 brake horsepower which will get it from 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. It actually came in saloon spec too but it's the estate that has really made a name for itself. It was good enough to win the North American Speed World Challenge GT series three years in a row from 2002 to 2004 and even had a plus example to make it even more powerful and performant. It's incredibly well equipped and seemingly no expenses were spared to give it the right suspension and handling as well as the large eight piston Brembo brakes and the electronic driver aids that made what is a pretty large car something way better than it really should have been in terms of handling. This plus the history of the RS2 helped to propel the RS6 into being one of the most popular cars on the internet. This is the cheapest car on the list, starting at around £10,000, whilst £20,000 will get you to an for example with around 50,000 miles on it. Age has left some wear and tear as well as leaks, which can cause failing turbos if not found. The main issue is failing torque converters though, which happens to many high mileage cars. I hate to have two cars from the same manufacturer in a video, especially BMW who I probably have a bit of a bias towards, but how can I talk about exotics under 20k without including the 5 litre V10 engined M5 that produces 499 brake horsepower and does 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. It's an icon even if it has horrendous reliability and probably should only be bought by people who enjoy being kept on their toes at all times. That S85 block is known for Vanos failure and rod bearing wear plus the SMG gearbox red cog of death too which can be horrendous for your bank account. However though unreliable that engine is a masterpiece with an iconic sound thanks to its F1 inspiration as it came from BMW's involvement with the Salva F1 team. I would personally go for a Touring just because only 1,025 were built and they are effectively gold dust in the fast estate world. I also think it looks better as a Touring than as a Saloon as it's not the most mental looking car of all time, let's be real. These glass cannons are listed for a minimum of around £13,000 but remember these were sub 10k three years ago with 20k getting a 2007 example with around 70,000 miles on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did make sure the like button I would really appreciate it and subscribe as well if you're new here. Massive thanks to the patrons as always for supporting to you guys as well for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Listen.